Welcome to our uh, webinar on Mystical Portugal. Veritas is very excited to be offering this new pilgrimage with two amazing, wonderful women who are faculty for Veritas, um, Judith Tripp and Laura Skolkis, and they will be introducing themselves. Um, we hope that this is um, something of interest to you that you will come on pilgrimage with us. And I'm turning it over to Judith now. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Don. This is Judith Tripp. And um, I'm so pleased to join with Laura in offering this pilgrimage to Portugal and to the sacred landscape of Portugal. And we talked about beginning this, this webinar just the way we will begin our circles when we're in Portugal, by tuning in to a deeper level of ourselves. So since we're calling the circle in this webinar, we'd like to imagine for a moment and ask you just to come into a deep breathing place inside your heart. Just allowing yourself to let the rest of the day go for a moment because the, the images that Laura has created in this slideshow will take us into very beautiful and evocative places. So. We'd ask that you come into that place inside yourself where you know yourself to be a pilgrim. And let yourself breathe into the pilgrim in you. And let yourself imagine surrounding you a circle of other pilgrims who have chosen to come together to have a mystical journey in Portugal. We can imagine ourselves standing on a labyrinth in Portugal together. That will be one of the symbols we'll use as we work together. So keeping that space as we talk to you about all the logistics and other things, I'd, I'd just like to briefly introduce myself a bit. <clears throat> and I want to apologize for my voice. I'm still recovering from a bit of bronchitis. so. I'm not quite in full voice here. Um, so I, I want to let you know that I have been doing pilgrimages to Avalon in England for the past 16 years. And I know firsthand what happens when a group of pilgrims come together and the kind of profound experiences that happen when you're intentional about your travel and that you are a pilgrim and not a traveler. Rupert Sheldrake once said that the world would change profoundly if every traveler became a pilgrim. And in my experience, that's absolutely true. There's something that happens when you come into relation to the world as a pilgrim and seeking for the spiritual level of things. So Laura kindly introduced me to many of the sites we'll visit when I visited her in 2013. And I fell in love with the Portuguese landscape and the beautiful culture of Portugal. It has echoes of the Celtic past. There's a coherence in the culture that's very breathtaking. And there is a palpable devotion to the sacred feminine, which is certainly one of the things I have been working with and holding dear for most of my um, working life. Um, and my, my work in the world um, is as a psychotherapist, but also I have been leading the Women's Dream Quest at Grace Cathedral for the last 28 years. And over the past years, I've also taken it all around the world. So I have a real appreciation for what it means to gather in appreciation of the sacred feminine. So I want to tell you a little story about how this pilgrimage came to be because it's, it's sort of an interesting story about how the magic layer of things works in the world. Laura and I were talking about expanding a workshop I do at Chart called Meeting Mary at Chart and expanding that into Portugal. And we were sitting in Jacksonville, Florida at a Veritas Council meeting. And we started to talk about all the places that we had visited when I was there in 2013. <laughs> and we were kind of getting excited about it but we're thinking oh well when will this happen and i went from that meeting to orlando and what happened while i was there looking at disney world and disney everything was that i found the basilica of the national shrine of mary queen of the universe and amid the crazy excess of orlando there she was 
And I wrote Laura back and I said, I found Mary. I met Mary in Orlando. What do you think about that? And she quickly wrote back with the first outline of this pilgrimage. So I kind of like to think that maybe Mary wants this to happen. And one of the places we'll visit is one of the apparition sites. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So we want to give you an experience on this pilgrimage that will, will feed every aspect of you. We want to have an initiation experience. And this slide here is a, the Well of Initiation in Sintra, Portugal. And we will partake of this walk and this place where initiation has occurred for centuries and centuries. And we'd like to think of what we're doing as the next step in each of our journeys on the spiritual path and using the circle and the place and the depth of our own experience to make that happen. But we also want to give you a great feast for your minds. And Laura has an encyclopedic knowledge of everything in Portugal and has, will be able to tell us wonderful stories and wonderful facts about what we're doing. So we'll want to feed our minds, <clears throat> we'll want to engage our spirits in an initiatory process, and we'll also every day have some time for body prayer, some yoga and movement, depending on our group and what we'd like to do, we'll, we'll help you to do those things. And then we'll also talk to each other in the sacred circle, which is an incredible way of deepening our experience and sharing of others' experience at that level. And we will actually also have a great deal of fun and good food and wonderful companionship. And by the end of our trip, we will come up to the autumn equinox, the moment in the northern hemisphere where we turn inward. And so our idea of, of the things we do on this pilgrimage will be moving toward that place of turning inward, just like we do on the labyrinth as we come closer and closer to the center. And our ceremony. In, um, in Fatima will honor that moment in the year and hopefully take into account of all the experiences we've been having for the, the days we spend together. And I think like all good pilgrimages, the time will stretch out and feel just as long as it needs to be for each of us to fulfill our own desire for depth and community. So. Um, Laura, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Judith. I'm really thrilled that you answered the call to co-facilitate our mystical Portugal pilgrimage. Um, your depth of wisdom will be a real asset to all of our pilgrims in, who come to Portugal. When Judith and I first met nearly five years ago in Chart, I sensed that the archetypally feminine land Escape of Portugal would resonate with her passion for pilgrimage and her profound connection with the sacred feminine. And now I just can't wait to experience it <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> I want to see how that wisdom will unfold on pilgrimage this coming September. It was nine years ago that I left a high-tech career in Silicon Valley and moved to Portugal to be with my husband. The labyrinth, along with my time with Veritas and Chart, my training as an advanced facilitator, and my work here in Portugal with the Labyrinth, all established my initiation into the mysteries of the sacred feminine. But it was here in Portugal that my relationship with the divine feminine profoundly deepened. My work on a Master of Wisdom Studies also served to ignite my interest and explorations in mythology, transformational art, earth energetics, and particularly place based legends and myths. And I'm delighted to be able to share some of that with those of you who will come on pilgrimage with us in Portugal. Judith and I envisioned this pilgrimage to be primarily an experience, experiential journey. And as she said, an initiation culminating with the autumn equinox in Fatima. Context shapes content. And our pilgrimage uh, this pilgrimage, the labyrinth will provide us context. The R's of walking the labyrinth inform the process of initiation for us as we encounter the mysteries of the sacred feminine in the landscape of Portugal. Portugal was founded in 1147, the help of the Templars and the Cistercian Order of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. 
it's a little known actually that connection uh, but becoming more well known recently with recent publications as you can see on the map portugal is a small country the size really of indiana and it sits on the westernmost edge of continental europe facing the atlantic with its back to spain we will suggest that Coming to, to our pilgrimage, it, a good place to start is flying into Lisbon, the current capital of, of Portugal and a continuously inhabited settlement for the last 2,000 years. From there, it's a short, short trip to Sintra, our starting point. And for those of you who are going on pilgrimage with Veritas in Chart in September, there are 10 or more daily nonstop flights to Lisbon from Paris Orly. It's only a two hour flight, very, very convenient add-on to your pilgrimage in France and very well connected to it. Also this summer, JetBlue has a new partnership with the Portuguese airline TAP, so there'll be lots of opportunities to fly from the US direct into Lisbon. So as you can see, our pilgrimage will be in this region, western central region of Portugal, and that's where we'll be concentrating our travels. We will begin in Sintra, less than an hour west of Lisbon, and we'll stay three nights in Sintra. And then we'll head north to Fatima. And our stops will include on the coast there near Fatima, Our Lady of Nazare. Then in Fatima, we will spend our time, as, as Judith said, at the 1917 Marian apparition site near Fatima. It's actually at a place called Cova de Iria, but most people just say Fatima. We'll be there for two nights, and at the end of our pilgrimage, then you'll have a choice to return to Lisbon by train, coach, or taxi, or continue on to other, other parts of Portugal on your own. It's just a two-hour train ride up to Porto, where there's also an international airport, and it's a beautiful country. So I still haven't feel I could I haven't explored it all after nine years. So I just want to give you a little bit of an introduction to Sintra and what what it's about. Um, as I said, it's less than an hour from, from Lisbon. It is a, located in a landscape that is UNESCO World Heritage. And for centuries, Sintra has been a favorite retreat of the wealthy and educated of Europe, a place to escape the summer heat of Lisbon or the dreary North Europe. In the, many of the 18th and 19th century poets visited Sintra and Lord Byron proclaimed it a glorious Eden. The undulating Sintra landscape sits beside the sea and is dotted with whimsical estates and palaces, as you can see here. The medieval village of Sintra is nestled far below the ruins of a Moorish castle that seems high on this hill. This hill is known as the Mountain of the Moon. We will be staying just a 10 minute walk from this lovely enchanting center of this village. Our hotel overlooks the Valley of the Fox, which is this valley in, front, in the forefront of the picture running along to the right. Here we can really sense the lush feminine landscape that was once the western edge of the Roman Empire. Um, Sintra actually, formally spelled with a C, is a name that evokes the Mount Synthus, which is the mythical birthplace of Artemis, or the Roman goddess Diana, the goddesses of the moon. Our hotel in Sintra will be the lovely Chalet Saudad, just steps away from the train station. It will be our home for three nights, and we will have this charming hotel all to ourselves. In this living room, the, or in the chalet's garden, is where we will meet for our first circle of the week and for our morning sacred practice, as well as our circle time. Every guest room in the chalet is different and unique, but they all offer luxury and comfort of a wonderful locally owned guest house. Our breakfast will be served daily at the nearby eclectic Cafe Saudade, owned by the hotel as well. This is an overview of our daily schedule. And it will vary a little bit day to day, but just to give you an, a feel of the flow. In the mornings, we'll begin with meditation and movement, followed by breakfast and some solitary time, if you'd like. And then we'll begin in sacred circle, where we'll have the opportunity to process experiences in community through art, ritual, and, and all the things that come with being in a, a community and pilgrimage. 
Lunchtime will generally be open, though we have a provided lunch on Friday in Fatima. Afternoons will be our sacred site immersion time, where we get to really experience what it means to be in the landscape of Portugal. Dinner on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is open, and we'll have group dinner on Tuesday and Thursday night, which will also be provided. Our evenings will be open on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we will have our ritual and labyrinth walks on Tuesday and Thursday. So you'll have an opportunity to walk the labyrinth at least twice during this week with us, uh, although it will be accompanying us everywhere we go. The earth is full of souls, said John O'Donohue, and place-based myth is the initiation doorway into the soul of a place. This is why I enjoy so much looking into the, the myths of, of particular places, and this our sanctuary of Our Lady of Penina is one of the places we'll go. Like dreams, myths have multiple layers of meaning and significance woven into them, from physical all the way to the spiritual. And on this pilgrimage, we will look at myths upside down and in a mirror so that we can peer into the deeper meaning of the sacred sites in which we are immersed. Ultimately, everything we encounter on our pilgrimage becomes or is already a part of us. This, this is one of the labyrinths we'll walk, and it's a modern labyrinth built just over 10 years ago, but it's at a, a hotel complex which is built on the grounds of a, what was a 14th century monastery. So it's a really special place to spend some time together, and we will be doing that while we are in Sintra. So I'd like to take a moment now to introduce a bit about Fatima. And actually, Judith and I spent time there, and I'd like to ask Judith to share her impressions and what we can look forward to when we're in Fatima. So Fatima is one of the Marian apparition sites, and I've had the good fortune to visit Lord and Banu in Belgium, Walsingham in England, and an absolutely unpronounceable place in Poland that was also is also a site. And I've found this wonderful feeling in each of those places. Um, it's built on the fact that pilgrims come and love these places. And when Laura and I came to Fatima, this was the day we were there, and it was just a glorious celebratory place. And even though there's great pageantry and magnificence around, the statue of Mary is a very simple one. And the story of her appearing to children, which is us the usual story in apparition stories, is a, a delicate and sweet one. And it, it is a place where open hearts are welcome. So I, I loved Fatima. So I'll give a very quick uh, overview of the hotel we'll be staying in, in Fatima. The Luz Houses, which are a, uh, a four-star four rural retreat center in a quiet landscape, a very short, well, a mile from the Basilica, but a short 10-minute walk from where the children grew up. Um, on the property is a lovely chapel for our use, and we will have exclusive use of this property. Each of the guest rooms are also very luxurious and modern and comfortable and make a wonderful retreat place. In terms of our week, looking at the weekend at, gl at a glance, you can see that the first three nights will be in Sintra, and then Thursday is our travel day where we will visit Nazare before moving on to spend the night in Fatima. And that night will be our equinox ritual. And then Friday will be our day with Our Lady of Fatima, and Saturday morning, which is uh, September 24th, I want to mention will be uh, the day that we close and finish in the morning so that there's time for noon departures. The very first postcard that came out stated the dates, uh, I think one day off. So the dates of this pilgrimage are September 19th, completing on the 24th, or morning of the 24th on Saturday. I just want to make sure you know that Monday to Saturday morning. So Nazare, I won't give you all the details, but I do want to mention that one of the many legends we will encounter is that of Our Lady of Nazare, who saved a nobleman from 
plunging into the sea and certain death. And you see this legend depicted in the stained glass window here. And now a small chapel dedicated to Our Lady of Nazareth stands on that very cliff you can see here with a much larger shrine nearby where there is a mysterious statue of the Virgin and Child that we will visit. Now the food in Portugal is wonderful, fresh, locally sourced. Judith, if you want to share anything you can, I think. I agree. <laughs> I would say it <laughs> Especially the I, olives and the cheese. <laughs> yeah. I want to mention the weather in September is usually very mild. Average temperatures from 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can feel very hot in the bright sunshine and very cool if there's coastal fog. So dress in layers, bring hat, bring sunscreen, and pre prepare for a wide range of temperatures just to be safe. This is a picture from near Fatima, one of the places where she did appear and where the angel appeared to the children prior to her visit. And I just want to mention a little bit about Portugal. It's a place where the ancient feminine earth-based spiritual wisdom continues to permeate the land. You know, there was an author here in Portugal in the late 70s, he published a book about the secret history of Portugal, and he wrote that 800 years ago at the foundation of the country, he believed there's a spiritual order at work that bringing about spiritual and cultural unity of humanity. We know that the Templars and Cistercian order, who were who also promoted the school of Chartres, supported the creation of Portugal as an independent country. And this author, Antonio Telmo, claims that while France hosted the political and military headquarters of the Templar order, Portugal hosted its inner headquarters as a place of rest and replenishment where spiritual and intellectual research took place. The best way to test this is to visit Portugal for yourself and experience it from your own place of inner wisdom. A portal is a doorway that marks the threshold between two realms. It is a liminal space where two seemingly separate places become one. Initiation is both a beginning and a rite of admission. The labyrinth facilitates our engagement with the sacred. The act of stepping into a labyrinth is our invitation for the sacred to engage with us. And in the same way, the responding to the call of pilgrimage is a to accept an invitation into a deeper and more meaningful engagement with oneself and the sacred. Pilgrimage like the labyrinth can be an initiation portal for us all. And we do hope that this pilgrimage will offer that to all of you. We look forward to you joining us on this journey in mystical Portugal. Judith, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, just that I entirely agree about Portugal being a place where the inner mysteries are really at hand and a place to go to find them. And I, 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 the first time I traveled was in September, and it was a perfect match of landscape and time and, and Laura's wonderful knowledge of the legends and mysteries of this landscape. So I also invite you, if you feel moved, to join our circle to come and encounter mystical Portugal. Right now, if you could just let yourself notice what you've absorbed from Laura's beautiful words and from these images that really evoke landscape and presence. And just ask your heart if you're part of this circle this time, this pilgrimage. And this is looking out from that well of initiation in Sintra and looking up and out after the journey of initiation, going deeply within. And we really hope you join us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>